made breaks of 114 and 70. And although he hasn't scored as prolifically as Hamilton, he has been Sixty. extremely steady and sure when uh, frames have reached their climax. Sixty-five. He's got this one in the bag. Seventy-one in the field. Hamilton led forty nil, but small clear to the point with seventy-one. Time. The lead nine eight. One up with two to play, and uh, an unscheduled third session to come. Yes, and more drama to come as well. Change of commentators. It's now Dennis Taylor and Jim Meadowcroft. Frame 18, small to play, 52-39 behind. Well, Chris Small fourth. He's led the attacking shot. And I don't think he's got away with it this time. This red's potable. Though it's not absolutely straight, there's a bit of an angle, and he's so close to it that it always tends to make it a little bit more difficult. Well, just make your mind up time, Anthony. Red Eight. and pink or black would be enough to leave Chris Small needing a snooker. in front with just a possible 27 left on the table. It's 15. <laughs> 17. So after seven and a half hours play, it's all going to be decided on the final frame. 24. And the frame. Anthony Hamilton. Good clearance under pressure from Anthony Hamilton. He levels the match down to the decider, nine frames all. No surprise to anyone that it goes to a 19th and final frame decider. Chris Small is at the table. He's leading 45 32. He's on a break of seven and taking on a rather risky looking blue. Too much pressure on that. What was he doing taking that on? Chris Small, seven. It's the sort of shot he normally would knock in, but in the Embassy World Championship, I'm thinking he might have been better with a good safety there. 
Yes, I think he was forced into that, or at least he felt as though he should take on the blue, simply because there's a red in one half and the other red in the other. So it was difficult to play a good safety shot, a constructive one, but that's quite a distance off, as you say, Dennis, and that's purely the pressure of this final frame here at the Crucible. a lot of snooker left in this deciding frame. Nine. He's going to need that blue, which is very awkwardly placed next to the pink. He's got the perfect angle to pop the black and get down for the yellow here. One good thing, if you can pop the yellow and pop the green, it'd be the right side of the brown to get up to that uh, blue. Uh, he's overdone that. Uh, that's just pure adrenaline there. Still okay, like, but he wanted to have a nice straight green. He's now had to go the other side of the brown, and he didn't really want that. <coughs> so he can't get a position now, or he hasn't got the angle to disturb the blue and pink, but he can leave himself the chance to play a good snooker. Anthony is shaking his head because the cue ball has bounced out rather too far because of the situation uh, where he was placed on the brown he knew that he could always play a snooker but because the cue ball has bounced out too far it doesn't quite lend itself to that angle yes what, you, what he's frightened of is, uh, is the blue rebounding and canning into the white Just made sure to get the blue set. Hamilton, 25. I don't think the blues come far enough off the cushion for Chris to get in behind it. He'd like to be able to play that shot because uh, that would ensure that he would leave the white close to the cushion and send the blue back up the table, but I'm not sure if he can manage that. I think that's what he's attempting get it from behind. Well, 
didn't work as he intended. It's a thin snick, but Anthony's got to make his mind up whether to have a go or just double the blue back up towards the black. That's his only two options. Yes, it's an awkward one. And of course, Anthony only requires the blue. Chris Small needs blue, pink, and black. So it's make your mind up time. Thin enough, and missed it on the thin side. Much better doing that than missing it on the thick side. Small is taking quite a bit of time. This is not easy to get safe from, not easy to get the blue into a safe position either. Well, a little short of pace perhaps. No, he's got it just about right. A generous round of applause that was very well executed. thicker contact he was trying to get the white in behind the pink and the blue right on the fourth cushion left a chance for Chris Small and the white will automatically come back up towards the pink big big shot some distance away with the pot but didn't want to catch the bump by the middle pocket so this has led to this opportunity for Anthony Hamilton Anthony just requires the blue
just made it much more difficult. All the pressure was on that pot. He looks very disappointed. And Chris, to get to the pink, got to come off a couple of cushions to avoid the cannon onto the black. It should be able to manage it. It's the second day here at the Crucible Theatre, and it's a final frame shootout, and it's going to be decided on the final ball by the looks of things. Chris Small needs pink and black. Yes, uh, looked as though he was able to uh, reach that. He's quite tall, Chris Small, but to take the rest, so this makes it a little more awkward. Released. Final black ball finish, best of 19 frames. And it's Chris Small who emerges the winner. We're into the next round by beating Anthony Hamilton by 10 frames to 9. Such a close match and a terrifically dramatic final frame. Chris Small goes through to the second round. Let's just take a quick look at the match summary. 9 10 it finishes. 108, Hamilton's highest break, 114, Chris Smalls. And interestingly, Chris spending marginally less time at the table, but the crucial factor is he won one more frame in a match which lasted just five minutes short of eight hours. Chris Smalls with me. Did it feel like eight hours, Chris? Uh, no, it felt actually longer than eight hours. I just, <laughs> just feel so drained after that match. And How tough was it? Really tough. I mean, yes, we were up yesterday morning to play and then up the today to play and then I had to go back to my room and come back later on this afternoon and just feels like I've, I've played a lot more than one match. Is it hard to maintain concentration in, in that sort of situation where you're on and off the table and it's always close, never more than one frame in it? No, not really. I mean, it's such a big tournament and such an important match for me because I'm still on my shirt at the top 16, so you're always you're always giving it 100% and mm -hmm. I was, I must admit, my concentration was good today. Quite pleased with that because that's usually a problem that I've got in some matches, you know, but uh, today I was concentrating well. Yeah. Only your second time here, of course. Uh, you reached the last 16 when you were last year, but that was seven years ago. Has it been frustrating at all over those years, not quite doing enough to get back to the Crucible? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think I lost in the last round about four or five years in the trot, and mm. I, I was actually starting to say to myself, I'm never going to get back to the Crucible. Mm. And uh, I mean, I was relieved to, to win my match at Telford this year to get back here, and, but now after getting that match out of there, I'm hoping to get a good wee run. Absolutely. Willie, you were commentary for most of the match, yeah. in fact. What were your, your feelings about the game? Well, I did the first 17 frames, and I mean, every credit to Chris, because he was being outscored by Anthony Hamilton a lot of the time, but what Chris did was win virtually every scrappy frame. Mm. We all know how hard now the professionals are on the circuit, how hard Chris Small is to beat. You know, he really digs in there and gives every shot 110%. He'd be the first to admit he's not the most fluent player in the world, but what mm. he does, what he lacks in fluency, he by more than makes up for in grit and determination. It was a tremendous win because until the last couple of frames, Chris, you were second favourite for most of the sure. sessions, weren't you? Sure. He actually just told me a funny story, really, that you know you book an alarm call at 7.30 in the morning. Quarter past nine, quarter past, <laughs> quarter past nine this morning. He's still in bed and playing at ten o'clock. You missed your, missed your alarm call. My fault. The, the, the phone in the hotel wasn't working right, so 
Uh, so you're, you almost missed the start. That's right. Heaven forbid. Interestingly, so much for current form. Last weekend's two finalists, exactly. Anthony Hamilton, Fergalabine, both out today. Uh, it's amazing, and mm. uh, they both played tremendous snooker last mm. week in the British Open. But uh, you know, Drago has been struggling mm. a little bit. He found a bit of form. Chris Moore's had a good season, in fairness to him. He's played very, very well. Mm. And as you rightly said, he's got a good chance of getting in the top 16. Still has to win one match, two matches. Not one or two, just depending on other results. So oh, he's yeah. certainly playing well enough to do just that. Great win for Jerry Chris. Well done again. And of course, it's John Parrott or Terry Murphy next for Chris. That'll be our featured match tonight when we return at 10 to 9. John Parrott was in here just a few okay. minutes ago, warming up and practicing for his match against Terry Murphy, which resumes in just a few minutes' time. So there we are. That just about wraps. Played twice before. He's won five four, and I've won five four. So two close matches. So it might be another one. That's going to be very tough. He's probably the most improved player on the circuit. Certainly the last you know eighteen months or so, he's been working hard at his game and he's getting good results for it for his efforts. Two players with a very healthy respect for each other. John Parrott and Chris Small getting the second round of this Embassy World Championship underway at the Crucible this afternoon. But if you were with us over on BBC One, just a consecutive year, won the title, of course, you'll remember back in 1991. So let's have some informed opinion on the qualities which have kept John Parrott in the world top ten, like top six, rather, for the last ten years. I think probably the main thing that, that, that I've hung around for so long basically is I'm dedicated. Um, I practice four or five hours every day. Um, and I like to compete, I probably think that's about the best thing. John Parrott is one of the best players England has ever produced. He has a wealth of experience, including a world title, and his newfound career on question of sport seems to have had a positive effect on his game. John Parrott is a snooker player who finally appears to be at one with himself. He's got so much experience, you know, more experience than anybody apart from Steve Davis that's still at the top of the game, you know. And he's got a great cue action, that's why he's been there for God knows how many years. John is one of the best long potters in the game. He uses a large overlapping tip to maximum effect. In fact, he was one of the first to employ this technique which gives a bigger area of contact on the cue ball and therefore helps with accuracy in the same way big-headed drivers do in golf. One. One shot. I think that when he gets on a boot of balls, he, he can score very, very heavily and uh, he's got a fantastic long game and he's got a fantastic safety game as well. Parrot is one of the best tactical brains in the game. One used to question his temperament and attitude, but certainly in the last couple of seasons, he seems more relaxed. Weaknesses, probably the occasional lapse in concentration. I just, you know, I miss the odd silly ball I should never miss, but we're only human. Possibly he gets a bit upset with himself sometimes. You see the, the, the shake of the head. Um, and he discussed there, uh, and, and some days he has a flat day where he just can't get himself out of the hole, he can't rise to the occasion. With his ability and experience, John Parrott is still capable of beating anyone on his day, and none of the young guns will relish drawing him in any tournament. Chris Small amongst them. Chris is 25, exactly the same as his world ranking. He's from South Queensferry, just outside Edinburgh. Good chance of getting into the top 16 if he has a good run at the World Championships. And after coming through uh, in the qualifying round against Dave Finbo, he edged out Anthony Hamilton, as you can see, 10-9 in a match which lasted just five minutes short of eight hours in the first round here at the Crucible. Now, second round, remember, best of 25, so it's the first to 13. We're going to join it in the opening frame. It's John Parrott to play. He's 44-10 behind in the frame. And describing this one for us, Dennis Taylor and Ray Edmonds. Well, we'll settle for that, one. Cannon.
played to hold the spot. And if he has, then he's been very careless. Yeah, I think he was just playing to uh, screw it back about six inches. But even if it doesn't go on the spot, he's still going to be in trouble because I don't think, is the pink spot available? I'm not sure. Because if the pink spot's not available, it's uh, going to even be more difficult. He would have to go as near as on the spot directly behind it, but <coughs> he's still in a spot of trouble. the problem in this situation you've got a, yeah you can see the blue rocking and that's because the cloth has just worn away a little bit with the constant respotting of the ball so it's not going to make a lot of difference uh, here <laughs> yes it's a, the, the referee is convinced that the blue will spot now he can't if it's rocking there he can't actually Put it on the other spot because there's a faulty spot that wouldn't uh, be fair i'm sure so i think if john accepts it's going to be there he's going to have to go to this other red to the right hand side looks happy No question, the referee checked it with his marker. He was convinced, and Colin Brinden, experienced, one of our best referees. Seven. And how well did he hit that one? Amazing to get the white right back onto the cushion. Jump out of the seventh. 